Profitblog.com. Hi, this is Ed with Profitblog.com, and in this video, we are going to go over installing the WordPress e commerce plugin. Now, this plugin lets you add a shopping cart to your website, lets your customers buy your products, services, and digital downloads online. So, we click on the link, and when the page refreshes, we can go over the plugin description, installation notes, FAQs, and so forth to download the plugin. Click on the download version 3.8.7.1 button and save that to your computer. Once it has finished downloading, you can switch over to your WordPress install. From the dashboard, you can go down to Plugins, then Add New, then Upload, then Browse to your plugin. Select the plugin, click Open, then Install Now. Once the plugin has been installed and the page refreshes, you can click on Activate Plugin. When the page refreshes, you'll see that you have a notification at the very top that says if you plan on editing the look of your site, you're going to need to update your active theme, and there's a link that you can click. So we're going to click that link. When the page refreshes, you'll see some options to move your theme files to a special place so that the plugin allows you to move those theme files for theming control if you want to change the look and feel of your site. If you don't, you can leave everything as it is. On this page, you will see the plugin settings. You've got some button settings that you can go over. We have an Add to Cart button and a Buy Now button. And you'll notice that the Buy Now button is grayed out because you need to activate PayPal Standard to enable that option. You can hide the Add to Cart button. We have some other settings for the products. You can show the product ratings, its stock availability, uh, display uh, how many items you want per line. You can display the link in a title and so forth. We can go over some of the other settings here. You can click on the products and here you can add a new product by simply clicking on the add new and filling out the appropriate information. Give the product a title. You can upload a description. You can also upload an image for the product by clicking on the add an image button. So you can select an image from your media library, or you can upload a brand new image. So we're going to go ahead and use a pre-existing image. And we can click Use as Product Thumbnail, and Save All Changes, and then Close. We can add tags to the product. We can select which category we want the product to go in. As we scroll down, we can set the price. Or we can set a sale price as well. We can mark it as a donation. Here we can add a SKU. We can set some tax settings. We can add other external links and additional descriptions. If the product is a download, we can here attach the product that they will download once they have finished finish their purchase. We can select some more product images. We can indicate if the product has a shipping weight, the height, what the cost for shipping is, and some advanced metadata settings as well. We can include some merchant notes, and we can allow the user to add some personalization options, for example, to leave a message on the product. Or we can also enable it, the user to leave some comments. If we preview this product, we can see our changes live. Go over to the live version, and we can see that the product thumbnail shows up, the item name, its description, the price, the sale price, 
how much for shipping, and it's got an add to cart button. Going back to the WordPress install, we can review some of the other options we have, like including a new category. So we can add additional categories by giving the category a category name. We can give the category an image on this side. We can tell it what its parent is, add a category description, and we have some more advanced settings towards the bottom. We can restrict what uh, country we want to view this category. We can also have some checkout settings as well to allow some additional uh, checkout fields. Back up to the products, we can also add some variations to the products. And we can also add coupons. So you can run some sales and specials. To add a new coupon, simply so click on the Add New, give the coupon a code, how much discount, either a dollar amount or a percentage. When it starts and when it stops, we can indicate that the coupon is active, and we can tell it if we want it to be used once per person, and either if you want it to apply on all the products or not. We can also add some additional conditions. So we can say we they must purchase a certain amount, for example, before the coupon becomes active. So we can tell them that the total quantity is equal to or greater than, for example, $25. So they have to spend $25 in order to obtain the 50% discount. And once you're done adding in all these elements, just simply click on the Add Coupon button. And your new cup coupon is ready to go. The plugin has some additional settings that can be found from the Settings tab. So we click on Settings and scroll down to Store. Click on Store. And we have these tabs up here at the top. We have the general, presentation, and so forth. We can see that we can set what our base country is. We can target what market. We can keep stock and cart. We can select what kind of currency. Where the currency sign is. We have more settings at the top. We have presentation settings that we can review. We can add to cart. We have an admin section. We can limit the amount of downloads per file. You can lock downloads to an IP address. You can limit uh, where somebody can download from. When somebody makes a purchase, you can send an email to the, this address. You can include that here. Same for the receipt. You can add some terms and conditions. We go to taxes. You can turn uh, some tax settings on here that are very specific to products or entire categories. We can have we have a shipping section where we can indicate if we want to use shipping or not and what our base city is, our postal code. And we can configure our shipping modules from here. In the payments tab, we can also configure our payment settings. So we can select any one of these to use as a payment gateway. Our checkout settings are under the checkout tab. So we can indicate if we want users to register before checkout, force them to use a secured socket layer page. We can include additional form fields. And always remember to save changes once you've made any updates. Under the marketing tab, we can display cross sales. So, for example, you have a product that is widget A and it has a related product which is widget B, and you want widget B to show up whenever somebody selects product A so that they are reminded that this is also something that they can purchase along with the product that they are currently looking at. We can add some social bookmarks, add a display uh, for the Facebook like button, and always click update once you're done. If we go back to the test product and refresh that page, we can see that now the like button has been added and some of the other options that we included earlier. Going back to the WordPress plugin, we can also go to the import tab and import settings from uh, a CSV file so to upload in bulk uh, multiple products.
for more blogging tips, please visit profitblog.com. Thanks for watching.